it all go. I'm going to be talking about kind of like bitterness and anger, dealing with that today. This is very important. It's very vital. It's very significant. But everybody in here needs somebody or someone to be making spiritual impartations in their lives. I ended up in class today talking about this. Everybody in here needs somebody to be making spiritual, notice what I said, impartations in their lives. The reason why we make so many wrong decisions in life because we've been listening to the wrong folks of who to marry or what job to choose. Amen? And we've been making decisions out of our flesh rather than listening to the people that has our best interests at heart. Amen? And that's the reason why we are in the condition that we're in today. Amen? Amen? But you need someone to give you godly counsel, godly advice, or to instruct you, amen, amen, giving you sound wisdom, amen. And this here bless me, and I, I, I really want you to hear me today, because my, my, my daughter here, uh, uh, Antoinette, Stan Antoinette, I'm going to use you today. This my daughter in love. We say daughter in love, but daughter in love. I want y'all to hear this today. She never makes a decision without her father. Y'all ain't hear me today. And it blessed me. I don't care what's going on in her life. I don't, I, I don't care I mean, what, what's going on at the house, with the car, or what, whatever it is with the children. She always called me. She had plumbing issues. Oh, my son said, oh, daddy, don't go there. She, she said, dad... <laughs> Having a problem with the bathtub, and 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 I was gonna go come over and fix it, but but she blessed me because she trusts me, as giving her the right advice. And, and do you know the Holy Ghost, not me, but the Holy Ghost always give me the right things to share with her. So she called me up. She said, "Dad, I I, I want you to come over and fix the the, the, the faucets and." And my, my son want to be just like his dad. <laughs> so he took it upon himself. And, I, and, I, and I, I, I really appreciate that. Now, what I was telling Antoinette, you know, he didn't learn from his father, so he trying to do. But the only thing, he didn't, sometimes you can do things too soon. And he went over there and he tried to handle the faucet himself. And water went everywhere. <laughs> Well, it was a mess. <laughs> and, and, and we had, uh, Dad came, they called me up, and I r I'm rushing there. Finally, we got the water off because it took us the longest to find it because it's three meters at that house. But the sprinkling system was another. So finally, we got it, and we, we turned it off. And, but, <laughs> but water, I mean, Carly, what, what, what she is, uh, uh, area was wet. Mellow, trying to hold the water back. He's soaked. And Antoinette was looking like. <laughs> so like, I told him. <laughs> even after that, e even after that, she called and said, Dad, uh, 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 we got to get somebody. You know, they have this, uh, what you call a pro serve. They come out and they have to dry the house out because it was so much. But she called me. And, and the Holy Ghost spoke to it because they were talking, we got to tear the walls off, we got to do this and do that. And, and, and the Holy Ghost spoke to me just first and said, turn, have her to turn on the heater in the house. Y'all ain't got to pay all, all, that, all, all, all that money. Come on, y'all. See, that was wisdom is. Yeah. See, because they would have went in that house, tore all the walls out, and she could have ended up paying twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. But the Holy Ghost said, have her to turn on the heater. And it's going to be real hot. I said, put it all the way high as it can go. And she, and she done that. And guess what? The house dried out and they didn't have to pay the money. See, let me tell you, wisdom is the principal thing. Amen. I ain't never went to school for that. I don't even know nothing about that. But God, amen, the Holy Ghost can give you insight. 
And that's why we need the proper people in our life making the right deposits in us. And that just blessed me, amen? It really did. Hallelujah. So watch this here. And, and that's what I want to talk about today. David had a spiritual counselor that was in his life that gave him godly advice when he needed it. Turn with me to 2 Samuel 16 and 23. I want y'all to see this here. Because even King David, the king, had to have somebody in his life. All of us need somebody in our life to give us advice, to give us godly counsel, to give us godly wisdom. Amen? Hallelujah. I know y'all quiet now, but watch. You're going to see it. It's, it's good. 2 Samuel 16 and 23. Second, yeah, go ahead. Yes, and the counsel of Ahithophel, which he uh, counseled. Ahithophel. Because I had a problem with that word, too. I, I, had, I had to use my phone. I'm going to tell y'all now. That's something. You have to use it sometime. You help me out. It's Ahithophel. Ahithophel. Okay. Which he counseled in those days. Uh-huh. Which if a man had, had inquired as an oracle of God. He, this man here. He was so anointed by God, when he spoke something, it was just like talking to God. I mean, you know, Ed, man, to have somebody like that in your life, that's an awesome thing. He, he, when he said something, if he said it was going to come to pass, he wasn't like these false prophets saying such and such, and you're going to do this here, and you do this, and you're going to receive a blessing. But when he said something, it came to pass. It was just like you talking to God. This man was so close to God, he heard from God that when he said something to David, he gave him sound advice. His advice was good. Read it again. I want y'all to see that. Read it one more time. And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired as an oracle of God. Wow. Wow. Man, that's awesome, man. But when you, but, but. Watch this here. In 2 Samuel 17, 17 and 23, the same man was the mouthpiece of God, ended up committing suicide. How could somebody be so close to God, hearing the voice of God, the very next chapter, take his life? And something happened that caused this man to do this. Read 2 Samuel 17 and 23. I want y'all to see this here. This same man read. I'm sorry. One chapter over. And when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, wow. he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order and hanged himself. He did what? He hanged himself. He took his life. He put his house in order. He made sure the wife was taken care of. Then he hung himself. He took him. How many people taking their life, got the spirit of suicide on, they taking their life because they don't want to live no more? How many preachers in the pulpit? How many pastors in the church? How many folks in position taking their life because they don't want to live no more? Something happened that caused this man to want to take his life. A man that was hearing from God, a man that was so anointed, a man that was so powerful and so awesome, ended up taking his life, committing suicide. And it's folks every day that don't want to live no more. Because something horrible that happened in their life, something that's so horrific, it takes their life and don't want to live no more. What happened? What happened that caused this man... That was so close to God. That was the mouthpiece of God. Took his life. We're going to see it. Second Samuel. Second Samuel. We're still there. Chapter 11 and verse 1. I'm going to ask my reader to start reading so y'all can see this. This is so clear. Something happened to cause. And it came to pass mm -hmm. after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him. Uh -huh. And all Israel, and they destroyed the children of a Ammon mm -hmm. and besieged Rabbah, but David tarried still at Jerusalem. He tarried that read. Amen. And it came he, to he, pass. Listen, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He wound up doing the wrong thing. 
Anytime you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you're going to end up doing the wrong thing. Okay? Read. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. Uh -huh. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. He saw a woman taking a bath, and he, he's on his rooftop, and this woman that's bathing, she was beautiful. Come on, I want y'all to see it. That pastor ain't just saying that. Read, watch this. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Me, 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 y'all know, you know, you call her a brick house. Uh -huh. A PYT. A knock house. Built like an Amazon. Fine. BBL. She looked good, and, 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 and something arose in David. Because he's looking at her. He's supposed to be at war, but he was in the wrong place, and the devil sent something his way he couldn't handle. When you're in the wrong place, the devil will send something your way that you can't handle. Don't care how strong and anointed and powerful or awesome you are, but the devil knows what to put on your menu. And from his rooftop, he saw a woman bathing. And look at her name, y'all. Her name is Bathsheba. Bath. Bath. She's known for taking baths. <laughs> Read. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uri the Hittite? And she married. See, you know what a lot of folk now mess with folks that's married. They sleeping with folks that's married. They having sex with folks that's married. And listen, y'all, and a lot of them think they're going to get away, but how many know it's a dangerous thing to mess with somebody that's married? Okay, okay. He inquired, who is this woman? Who is this fine thing? Why I can't shake this? Because he was in the wrong place. I want you to get read, read on, sister. I'm about to by two. Read. And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, mm -hmm. and he lay with her. Yes. For she was purified from her uncleanness, mm -hmm. and she returned unto her house. He sent her back, and she returned to her house. That's just like men do. They sent her back home when they finished with her. Okay, read. And the woman conceived. What, what happened to the woman? And the woman conceived. The woman got pregnant. So These are the words. Don't no man want to hear when a woman tell you, I'm pregnant. <laughs> Come on, y'all be honest with me. You don't want to hear that? You think you didn't hear it and quit it, got away, but she called you, I'm pregnant. She sent you a text, I'm pregnant. No man want to hear them words. Because David thought he hadn't got away. Read on, man. I'm going home. And sent and told David and said, I am with child. I am with child. Now watch this here. When David gets word she's pregnant, he, come, he comes up with a plot for the sake of time. He calls for Uriah to come home from battle. And he expects for him to come home and he go to the house so he'll think that he the father. Come on, y'all have done it before. Come on, come on, man. Of the child. But when he goes back, you, Rob, being a, man, being a man of war, he said, how can I, I have pleasure with my wife when we out here battling? So he stayed at the king's house. He didn't go home and lay in the bed with his wife. So David come up with another plot, another scheme. I think he's slick. He's still coming up with schemes. Maybe what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw a party. And I'm going to get him drunk. And he's going to go home and lay with his wife. And then he'll think he the dad. So look at David think he's slick. He done got away. But Uriah got drunk and fell asleep in the palace. 
He must not have been a black man. Because if you tell me, come on, y'all, come on, y'all, be honest with me now. Be honest, come on, man, come on, be honest with me. He, he couldn't have been, been black. He told me, go home. And he still wouldn't do it. He fell asleep at the door. So, so the third plot, number one didn't work, number two, so he come up with the third one. He gives him the, a death sentence or a letter that was sealed, and it says to put him on the front line, I had the officer to put him on the front line to have him killed and he was gunned down. How could you call David after, after God's own heart? He done something like this here. Had the man killed. Now that's enough to sleep with his wife, get her pregnant and, and then have him killed. And David, listen, David thought he hadn't got away. But let me share something with you. When you do things, somebody is always watching. Somebody see you. See, you think you done got away. You done went to Walmart and sold those steaks. And you thought that nobody was looking. Hallelujah. Or, or, or you done done something like that. You was on got busted. Somebody saw you. I don't care what you do. You thought you got away at the hotel. Didn't nobody see you, but. Somebody saw you hitting that blunt. You thought you hadn't got away. <laughs> you trying to hide it. They, they saw you. Somebody always see what you do. And, and, and this what happened here. And this why uh, uh, Hitlerfield became so bitter. He became so angry because he saw what David done. He knew what he done. He was aware of it. And a lot of folk then done some ugly things to us. But we can't go around carrying grudges in our heart and bitterness. Hallelujah. And some of you are dealing with bitterness right now. If you see them come to the party, you'll leave. You see them come to the church, you'll sit way on the other side. You see them, amen, coming down the street, you'll go the opposite way. They text you, they call you, they email you, and, and they FaceTime you. You don't want to have nothing to do with them, so you done cut them off. And you done became so bitter because they hurt you, you want to see them dead. Woo! The pain they caused me. Why did they have to do me like this? I gave them my heart. I gave them everything I had. Why they done me like this? Have you ever said that? Been good to people and they just treat you so bad? Why you treat me so bad? Hurt you. It's a steady building up. Steady building up. And that's how it was. Hallelujah. Okay, why did a hit the field? Come bitter. This is the cause because Bathsheba was his granddaughter. That's why he was hurting. That's why he was bitter. That's why he was angry. Because listen at you. Come on, come here, Aaron. This is my, this is my, 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 my granddaughter. I love my daughters and I, I love them, but I got a special, a grandparent. Y'all, you, you see, you got to be a grandparent to be able to identify what I'm saying. But I got a special love. I, I got a special bond for her. See, you can mess with the children, but you don't mess with them grandchildren. That's his heart. That's his, that's his passion. That's what keeps, listen, when you get a certain age and you have grandchildren, Grandchildren would make you happy and excited and love living now because of the old grandchildren. You about them two grandchildren gifts and won't get the children nothing. I know I'm telling the truth. Hallelujah. You'll make sure them grandchildren take it care of. You'll go over and above for the grandchildren. As a matter of fact, watch this here. We love our grandchildren so much. We ask them where you want to go for spring break. Anywhere in the United States. And I ain't bragging, but that's the love we have for them. Now, if our children ask us that now, wait. 
We got to pray about that. <laughs> my son been saying that for the longest messed up now. As a matter of fact, Mello got my necklace and Mello got certain things, whatever they asked for. And they asked for a trip to L.A. They want to go to Cal Hollywood. Case closed, we going. Ask what you will and it shall be given. And God is going to bless some of y'all to do the same thing in return for your grandchildren. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. That's why we're going to Washington, D.C. That's why we're traveling. Because, wait a minute now. See, when God bless us, we got to be a blessing to others. And the same thing me and Angie experience, we want y'all to experience it too. And that is a pastor and the first lady that loved their people. And can't nobody say we don't love our people. But watch this. That was his granddaughter. Slept with her granddaughter. His granddaughter had the husband killed, put him on the first line. And listen at this. He almost got away. Y'all ever watch that? Almost. But even the one that almost get away, they get caught. And let me tell you some ministers and people in position. It's certain things you do. God won't allow you to get away with it. But that was a word for the hey, Come on, hallelujah. You can't be in this poor pit and be hoish. You can't be in this poor pit sleeping around with folk. You can't be in this poor pit taking folk money. I ain't got to say amen. I know it's the truth. Some folks preach because of souls, and some folks preach because of money. Mm, 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 mm. Watch this here. Watch this here. See, I'm going to give you four points, and we're going home. How to overcome bitterness. How to overcome bitterness and hurt and unforgiveness and things in your heart. I got, I got it. The Holy Ghost got me laying them out right here. The first one, the first point is this here. Realize what they did to you is not worth you losing your relationship with God. When you allow someone to cause you to become bitter, it impacts your relationship with God. It affects your relationship with God. You can't hear from God when you harm an unforgiveness in your heart. You can't hear God speaking to you when you got unforgiveness in your heart. It affects your relationship with God. Do you know, do you know, I, I, know, I know I'm saved. It's not how I, I jump, speak in tongues and all that and, and pay my tithes and do that. I know I'm saved because God gave me the capacity of loving folk that I know that don't like me. That's how I know I'm saved. I love folk that hate me, that can't stand me, but I still can love them. I can still pray for them. I can still preach to them. I can still encourage them because they're not my problem. That's point number one. You got to realize what they've done to you is not worth losing your relationship. Furthermore, what they've done to you is not worth you taking your life. Come on, there's more fishes in the sea. Why are you running after somebody that, ain't, that, that don't want you? Why you want somebody that don't want you? What's wrong with you? You crazy. I won't, I don't, I'm serious, y'all. I don't want nobody. If Angie don't want me, if she don't want this fine, good-looking, bald head man. <laughs> because the worst thing you can do is be in a relationship when the other person don't love you. Boy, that was a nugget right there. And y'all still going down. You cook for them. You run the bad water. You do this. You take them out. You give them money. You do all that. And they still ain't, don't care nothing about you. As a matter of fact, they call you their spare tie. And you still running after them. They got somebody else. And you know they got them. And they laying down with them. And laying down with you too. Oh, tell the truth, pastor. Ain't no, we ain't going to 
gonna be no side piece of nobody. Come on, your standards ought to be higher than that. Come on, y'all serious. And I ain't talking about just being holy, just being a woman. Your standards ought to be higher. So that's the first point. Second point is, watch this. Realize you yourself is not the judge. When a person hurts you, why, it, you, you're not the judge. you don't have no heaven, no hell to put them in. And as a matter of fact, I told you they're God's problem. So you take your hands off of it and let God handle it. See, but when you intervene and try to step in and handle it, God said, oh, I'm going to back up. You got this. So I'm going to leave them alone. See, vengeance belongs to the Lord. I used to try to get back at folks earlier that done stuff to me. I used to try to get them back. But you know what? I, 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 I learned how to back up and I let God do it. That's maturity there. Amen? Let God, they, they ain't your problem. Make God's problem. Amen? Okay. Point number three. Realize you are not sinless yourself. Boy, that's good right there. Why are you so quick to find faults in everybody else? But you done wronged some people. You done hurt some people. You done lied on some people. You done done people wrong too. You, in other words, you hadn't dotted every I, crossed every T, slowed down at every comma, stopped at every period, done everything right. You're not walking the tight line. You done messed up. You done hurt some folks too. And you know what? It's easier for us to dish it out, but we can't handle it when it comes back on us. We don't want folks, watch this here, we don't want folks to talk about us, but you gossip about other folks. Hallelujah. We, we don't want them, amen. We don't want them putting our name out there on Facebook, but you put their name out there. <laughs> Boy, y'all quiet today. See, 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 you know what, what humbled me? When things happen, folks do me wrong, I always think about all the dirt I've done before I got saved. How many of you did dirt before you got saved? And some of y'all still doing dirt. That's why I thank God he didn't judge me or deal with me based on the things I've done in my past. But he erased and gave me a future. Man, that's enough to thank God for right there. This is the last point. We're going home. Point number four. Oh, boy, this is good right here. Man, I want to take over. Man, I fell down on this one. Else. Watch this. Number four, watch this. Realize the pain someone calls you actually help promote you. Y'all got to excuse me. I said the very folks that hurt you, that talked about you, that lied on you, that broke your heart and promoted you, you'll never be in a place where you are now if it ain't been that they ain't done that to you. So you need to say thank you that you left me for somebody else. Thank you that you broke my heart. Thank you that you lied on me. Thank you. Because I'll never be in a place where I am today. They meant it for evil. Y'all going to catch it out the way. I said they meant it for evil. But God meant it for your good. Tell somebody what you went through. I know you had to cry. I know it hurted you. I know it wounded you. But what they meant for evil, God meant it for your good. Tell somebody it was good that I was afflicted, that I learned some things. Say it was good that they mistreated me because I learned something. It was good they stopped coming over my house. I had to learn something. It was good that they left me for my best friend. I had to learn something. It was good that they dogged me out. It was good. And we know 
all things work together for the good to them that love God. Look at somebody. Say what you going through is working for your good. It's working for your good. Tell them it's not a setback, but it's a setup. A hallelujah. God said, I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to take you somewhere. Now, got to excuse me, but when me and Angie were being scandalized about that child, I couldn't see it, what God was about to do. We held hands and cried together, and we said, Lord, why, why this had to happen to us? And we kept crying, but the Holy Ghost said, I can't promote you until you experience pain. I can't take you up until you go through some things. I can't elevate you until some faults come against you. And if God be for you, I said if God be for you, who can be against you? Grab your neighbor by the hand before you leave this place. Say 2024, I'm going up. 2024, I'm going up. No dead weight, no pressure. I'm going up. Every round, go higher and higher. I'm going up. Do I have some folks today that want to go up with me? Do you want to travel with me? Do you have your traveling shoes on? Look at your neighbor say, traveling shoes. I got on my traveling shoes. Oh, hallelujah. In other words, no pain, no gain. I said, no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. But God know how to turn pain. Now I got game now. Hallelujah. Tell somebody you can take it. You know how to take a licking and keep on ticking. The more they throw dirt on you, that dirt ain't number fertilizer. Dirt ain't number fertilizer. When they throw doo-doo on you, that ain't number fertilizer. Look at David said, that ain't number fertilizer. They growing you up. They growing you up. They promoting you. They elevating you. They taking you up. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, promotion time. Say, I decree it in your life. God is going to promote you to another place. Even on your job, in your family, in your finances. Go ahead and speak it, Holy Ghost. He's going to promote you over your enemies, over your haters. God is going to promote you at the right time. Look at somebody and tell them this. It's time to be promoted to another place. It's time to go to another level. Promotion time. Promotion time. Promotion time. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them, say, who that? Who that? Who that? Who that said God ain't bad? Who that? Who that said God ain't bad? Who that? Who that said God ain't bad? Who that? Produces promotion. 
emotion. Get it in your spirit. Listen, tell everybody that hurt you, send them a text, send them a text, say thank you. That's mature stuff there when I listen. Thank you. I got more money in my pocket now. I got more on my EBT card. Y'all hear me today? Y'all ain't hear me. I got more gas in my car now. I'm more at peace now. God bless you. Yes. Uh, listen, if you've been harboring something in your heart and it's been years of hurt and you ain't been able to shake it loose I'm serious, I, I don't want to, this prayer is not for anybody but it's been so hard and it keep rising up, when you think it's gone it keep coming back the hurt is down I want to pray for you today and you feel you just can't let it go because they wronged you and you was innocent. Come now. Come now. If that's you. If that's you. And it keep coming back. 